Daytona Beach, 1955. Chevrolet sets new all-time records for its class in stock car acceleration and flying mile competition. Darlington, South Carolina, Labor Day, 1955. The World Series of Stock Car Racing. A grueling 500-mile classic over this fast Grand National track. A thrilling race, a thrilling winner, Chevrolet. Daytona Beach, February 1956. The same hard-packed Florida sand strip fronting the ocean. And hard-running competing stock cars fighting the clock in one-mile acceleration tests and one-mile time trials. A record-breaking pace with record-breaking wins in both events by Chevrolet. Sebring, Florida, March 1956. Five and two-tenth miles of slick straightaway and treacherous curves. One of the toughest road race courses in the world. And a grinding 12-hour endurance run for racing and production model sports cars with Corvette proving itself the hottest sports car in America. Gardena, March 1956. A California short track racing oval. Every foot a challenge. A challenge met and won by Chevrolet in a one, two, three winning finish. These are highlights of a few of the many stock car events held throughout the year from coast to coast. And as in these annual Daytona Speed Weeks, all regular production cars, standard and sports models, compete under the uniform rules of the National Association for Stock Car Auto Racing. Every event is an exacting test of a car's ability to perform. An opportunity to prove engineering superiority. A chance to display those outstanding performance features that are the trademark of a winner. And here are official NASCAR results written into the record book. Results that substantiate Chevrolet's claim to leadership on the racing strips, and thus also on the highways. In 1955, Fayetteville, North Carolina, Gardena, California, Flat Rock, Michigan, Toronto, Canada, Baltimore, Atlanta, and 11 other short track wins for Chevrolet. A new record of 658 points, more than three times the number tallied by its closest competitor. And in 1956, Chevrolet once again is far out in front of its closest competition, increasing its national point standing from last year's three to one margin to this year's four to one lead. That's the Chevrolet habit to come out on top in these tremendous power performances. The pulsing runs against the clock, the exciting contests of men and machines. But there's more than thrills and excitement in this growing American sport. These are performance tests in the public proving grounds where a spectator can see what a car can do and give him an idea of why the car that wins so consistently on the tracks is also the nation's performance and sales leader. To get a better idea, a real bird's eye view of these winning Chevrolet performance features, let's look in on this demonstration race. It's a work session for top ranking stock car drivers preparing for a big coming event and driving their choice, Chevrolet. This race will be run under exactly the same conditions as any official stock car race. All of these Chevrolets are production models engineered and built the same as any found on a showroom floor. The gas comes from the public filling stations. It's the same that's used in all stock car races. This isn't the first run for any of these battle-scarred cars. Along with the drivers, they've chalked up plenty of mileage and wins in the toughest competition. Outside of the dents and paint scratches, they still roll at peak performance. And this will be a hot run, too, with Jim Reed joining in. He's racked up the short track championship three years running, driving his choice, Chevrolet. Thoroughly checked, the cars swing out for their pacing run around the track. They jockey easily, getting the feet of the track, and hold formation for a good start. man steadies and readies them and they're off with that sparkling get up and go power so smooth on the takeoff and soaringly smooth as the cars pick up speed responding instantly to the touch of the toe on the accelerator almost frictionless transmission gives the peak efficiency that makes these and any Chevrolet the hot car that 
what pays off in these bruising short track tests. Surgingly smooth power that never lets up and never lets a Chevrolet driver down on racetrack or highway. There's that power and some in reserve, too, when that extra bit of throttle is called for, just like these drivers call for it during a race. And they get it, too. That sure-fire accelerating response, so vital for safe passing and getting out of the tight spots. And in these short track races, run in quarter-mile ovals that are practically one continuous turn, there are nothing but tight spots. Hitting those horseshoe corners at breakneck speed without excessive braking and drifting is quite a feat. But these drivers plow right into and out of these turns without any let up. Or as they say, they stick their foot in it and keep going. That's because they know that the car they're driving has got body balance and that it hugs the road as tight as the tires hug the wheel rims. They don't fight these curves. They ride them as fast as the natural physical laws will let it. And always with the solid assurance that the car will come out of the turns without rocking and rolling all over the track. Because even at this pace, pounding around the turns lap after lap, the car handles with smooth, easy responsiveness. Ball race steering provides maneuverability that makes the difference between a champion and an also-ran. This goes not only for the racing driver, but the everyday driver as well. And it's a comfort for the everyday driver to know that at any speed, he's got his hands wrapped around the safe, responsive steering wheel of a Chevrolet. During the long, lap-consuming, mile-eating turns around the track, about the only stop any of these cars ever makes is to change a tire or gas up. That's because Chevrolet is engineered not only to be kind to the car, but also to be kind to the owner as well. Under all everyday driving conditions, hardly any of which can duplicate the rugged routine of this racing oval, here's the car that provides fatigue-free, enduring, safe, and economical driving all the way down to the last lap. And here we are, after a long lap-churning run coming into the final laps. Just one more to go. Around once more into the last turns. And across the finish line, the winner. They're all winners, right from the starting line down to the finish. In this run, with Chevrolet pitted against Chevrolet, the only difference between the winner and the runners-up is the caliber of the man behind the wheel. But when the chips are down, it takes more than driving skill alone to win consistently and smash records. It takes a car that can come up with a tremendous stock car performance like this one at Darlington, South Carolina, April 26, 1956. A 1956 Chevrolet 210 blazes around the track to shatter a current record established in 1954 and set a new endurance and performance record for the NASCAR 24-hour closed course endurance run. 2,438 bruising miles, 3,546 car-killing turns around this one and three-eighth mile oval. An average of 101.58 pace blistering miles per hour for 24 consecutive hours. Topping the previous record by 280 miles with an increased average speed of 11.69 miles per hour. And this includes the time taken for gas stops and tire changes. Here is a roaring true-to-life test to the utmost of endurance of shocks, spindles, hubs, wheels, steering arms, brakes, and every mechanical unit and nut and bolt in the car. A 24-hour run rigorously demonstrating the overall road pounding a car can withstand, far in excess of everyday driving demands. In this amazing run, the record-blasting Chevrolet stood up to the test, demonstrated beyond an iota of doubt or argument that this is the hottest car in its class, that Chevrolet is America's automobile leader, the swiftest, surest, safest performer on the highways today, and a big winner all the way.